Well, you're about to see the video for yourself. A wife recording her own husband who seems drunk. Police at one point even arresting him for a DUI. They thought he was drunk too. But the medical mystery was that he'd hardly had a drink. It was something else. Here's Deborah Roberts. 34-year-old Nick Hess is the classic active guy. He bikes, swims, plays volleyball. His wife Karen can barely keep up. I'm the more serious person. He really keeps things lighthearted. We're almost like complete opposites. <laughs> she, she's the, uh, the order to the chaos over here, I guess. I'm an upbeat, like, hyperactive, fun guy. Even with different personalities and career paths, she's in an office, he's now a waiter, life was good. Is everybody good so far? But then there was something else, something really strange. We would be watching television episode after episode, and by the end of the evening, he would start to be confused and he would start slurring, and he did smell like he had alcohol on his breath. Karen began recording Nick on her phone. I don't feel good. You don't feel good? Yeah. What do you feel like? I feel like, uh, like I'm like on some hard drug or something. Had he been drinking at that point? No, we were, we were together all day. Um, watching television. Have you had anything to drink? Nothing. Not one thing. Why are you recording me? Because I want to show this to the doctors. How intoxicated did he appear at times? It got really bad. She was filming me. I mooned her on camera. I slurred and was swerving. I used a lot of profanity. Um, when I looked at it, because I wouldn't believe it, my heart just fell like straight down. Desperate for answers, Nick and Karen took their video to doctor after doctor. There was one doctor that said, I think you have a closet alcoholic on your hands. Even Karen began to wonder if the man she's known for 10 years had a deep secret. I went through the entire house looking, looking for alcohol in the mattresses, everywhere, in between uh, the towels and the towel rack, um, anywhere that I think that you could find a small bottle or a small flask. So the painful part was just doubting him. There was no evidence that Nick may have been drinking until one night in 2011, when driving just a few blocks from home, Nick says he was hit by an oncoming car. I got through this alley, and right up here is where the accident happened. I picked up my phone and I called the police instantly. But when they arrived, police quickly make Nick the focus of the investigation. Nick, how much you get a drink tonight? Uh, I had one beer. One beer? Yeah. How long ago was that? Um, about 12 hours ago. Slurring and wobbly, police are convinced he's had more than one beer and insist on a breathalyzer. Blow, 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 blow. There you go. Then startling results. 0.236, according to the police report. Nick was nearly three times over the legal limit. You now are under arrest for operating a vehicle under the influence. What did you think when you got the, the, the news that he'd been pulled over for DUI? It just made me more determined to try and figure out what was going on with him. Now skittish about driving, Nick began biking. But even that would become problematic. Nick took a bad fall and was rushed to the ER, where he got this news. So they couldn't give me medication because they said I'd had alcohol in my system. When they told me I was drinking, I told them they were crazy. I, I'd been with my wife all day. I had nothing to drink. So what's happening with Nick? It's a bona fide medical mystery. Karen, certain that her husband is no alcoholic, turns to her computer for hours researching. I finally begged her, please stop. Like, there's nothing that we can do anymore. I may just have to live with this. Um, please stop. But luckily for Nick, his wife wouldn't stop. I had come across this article about auto brewing. It was like, oh my gosh, this is what he has. I'm convinced of it. An aha moment. Auto brewery, Karen learns, is when excess yeast in the intestine ferments carbohydrates and other sugary food into, get this, alcohol. We believe this is where the yeast resides. At Dr. Barbara Cordell, one of the alcohol. authors of the case study, had a patient like Nick who was plagued by inexplicable drunkenness. She put her patient under observation with no access to alcohol. They fed him a high carbohydrate diet and checked his blood alcohol level every two hours. The next day, his blood alcohol level went up on its own. And when they looked at the yeast in his intestines, 
This type of yeast that was in our patient is the same yeast that is used to brew beer. His stomach was a microbrewery. Now Karen needed to find a local Ohio doctor who would be open to the suggestion. She discovered Harvard-trained Dr. Anoop Kanodia. As for Nick's results, off the charts, four times the normal amount. It picked up the highest level of yeast I've ever seen on a patient. This is what your other doctors are missing. So he had Nick completely change his diet. We had him take out all the foods that break down to sugar. Things like breads, pasta, and rice. And guess what? After just four weeks of making simple diet changes, his strange affliction vanished. No wooziness? No intoxication? No. What'd that feel like for you? Yeah, it was awesome. It's incredible. Um, after dealing with for so long, I was in such major denial. But you had your guy back. Yeah, it was the Nick I fell in love with. I'm the luckiest person alive. I keep getting better and better, and I love it. I love it. 